In this lecture, we will learn about some collision resolution strategies in hash table. Okay, and in particular, we will look at open addressing scheme. Okay, so what's this open addressing scheme? So in open addressing hashing system, all the data go inside the table itself. So last time we learnt about the separate chaining or open hashing in which we maintained link list for each memory index okay and the hash table and it grew in size okay it became more than the number of memory cells in hash table but we will look at some other strategies where we don't utilize anything extra than the hash table memory itself but this requires bigger table and it works when your load factor is below 0.5 okay so let's see what is there so in open addressing basically what happened in the open hashing so whenever there was collision okay something collided here like 10 20 30 40 50 in case of a hash function okay where hx is x mod of 10 so this is let's say 0 index 0 so everything was all these values will hash to index 0 and then we make a link list like this but the thing is it requires some extra space okay in the link list also needs memory and I don't want that I want that okay let's have open addressing the all the memory values inside the hash table all the memories that store all these okay so for that what we do so I will in fact give you one example okay one good example of what will happen here okay so the thing is we have let's say the hash function h of x is x mod of 10 again the same example I'm taking so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so these many cells are there in your hash table and I have the inputs let's say 10 20 30 40 50 now as you see it's so all of them will be 10 mod of 10 is 0 20 mod of 10 is 0 so on everything will be mapping here and they will be in the link list like this 50 40 30 20 and 10 okay so this is a link list and this is the index 0 of your hash table okay but the thing is we have so many places in the hash table itself where memory is there free but we are using some extra memory in this link list so we want that okay this these memories should be utilized okay so how to do that and that's why we see that the concept of open addressing was there okay so we want that these places that were there i utilize these I utilize let's say that when I inserted 10 so 10 came here somehow 20 I found that there was collision then it should come here then again I find that okay h of 30 when I'm trying to find it comes out to be 0 I want to insert it at 0 but it's already filled then what I do I go to the next thing next place which is 1 h of 1 okay place okay so ht hash table 1 this is also filled so I go to the next place so this is known as linear probing okay so we are basically probing we found that okay h of 30 should belong to 0 it was already filled I come to 2 basically next place it was already filled so h of 30 next thing what I can do is I can put it here h of 40 again what i do i search it here it comes it should be at zero it's not empty 20 next place not empty 30 is also not next place of index 2 is not empty i will put it here so now you can see what will be our function here so h of x 
will become basically hash of x plus f of i okay um, mod of 10 so now you will ask what is this f i so in this linear probing so basically this f of i is nothing but i okay so hash so this is h i x so first time i could not get some space so i will now h of 0 okay so h of 0 x will be hash of x plus f of 0 which is equal to 0 itself and it will be mod of 10 so the first one will be hash of x mod of 10 so it will be the same others will be varying basically you add plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 to them till there are collisions is not resolved okay so we will see it formally let's see it here in the slides so this is we have cells h0x h1x h2x are tried in succession where hix is given by hash of x plus fi modulo table size okay where f0 is 0 so hash x is there which was x modulo 10 and then modulo table size okay so there are three common examples okay which are linear probing quadratic probing and double hashing we will be using this one linear probing so what is linear probing in linear probing as we saw collisions are resolved sequentially scanning an array with wrap around until an empty cell is found okay so this is what we were doing we were just finding sequentially okay h of 20 we were putting at h of 20 is 0 but it was already occupied so i moved to the next place h of 30 is also 0 but 10 first place 0 a second place 1 is occupied i come to 30 and so on okay so f is a linear function and typically we take f of i here is equal to i that's what we were doing okay so when first time h of 20 collided so f of 1 became 1 i did plus 1 so it moved to the next place now this example shows okay linear probing hash table after each insertion okay so let's see so our hash okay so let's try to see so this is the hix is hash of x plus fi mod table size okay so here we have let's say hash of x is x mod of 10 okay this is hash of x so first insertion is insert 89 89 modulo 10 you get 9 I find that okay in this table hash table size is also 10 so 9 is free here I put 89 here then we have to insert 18 18 modulo 10 is 8 cell number 8 is free so I put 89 and 18 comes here then I need to put 49 49 modulo 10 is 9 now you see that okay so this 9 is now filled now what you do h1 of 49 will be 49 modulo 10 9 plus f of 1 which is fi is equal to i so f of 1 will be 1 so it will be 9 plus 1 mod of table size 10 so 10 modulo 10 it's 0 so 49 comes here okay that's good because now you, we are not going into a link list because so much free space is still there okay and then we have hash of 58 58 will go to h of 0 will be it will come to the 8th position 58 modulo 10 is 8 it comes here but again there is uh, now collision so what happens h1 of 58 will be so first one was it was hash to 8 plus 1 modulo 10 9 modulo 10 so again it finds a collision okay it will try hash to h258 is equal to 8 plus f of 2 is 2 10 modulo 10 0 
again it finds collision here also okay so this two collisions it finds so h3 it writes out for 58 so it's 8 plus 3 modulo 10 so it becomes 11 modulo 10 1 so now 58 comes to this place okay and then what we try is 9 h of 9 again 9 modulo 10 it tries to come here it's not available then it tries plus 1 it comes here not available plus 2 9 plus 2 11 modulo 2 okay so then it comes here okay so let's try so this is what is happening so now you see this is linear probing so last one let's try to do again so h of 9 will be 9 okay so that is filled so h1 of 9 will be 9 plus 1 modulo 10 so 10 it becomes 0 it goes here h2 of 9 will be 9 plus 2 11 modulo 10 11 modulo 10 is again 1 it cannot go here h3 of 9 is so 9 plus 3 so 12 modulo 10 it goes to 2 and it find its place here okay so this is what is happening in linear probing so we have different for each of the steps we have different hi and we calculate like that now find and delete okay so we have to search something the find algorithm this was the insertion we were talking about the find algorithm follows the same probe sequence as the insertion algorithm to find 58 would involve four probes okay 58 when we try to find 58 so 58 let's try to do with some other color so 58 h of 58 will be 8 i try to find it here 58 is not there okay in the last this table then i do h1 of 58 which is so h hash of this value so 8 plus 1 so 9 modulo 10 so it will try it here not found h258 it will be 8 plus 2 10 modulo 10 0 it doesn't find it here h358 it's 8 plus 3 11 modulo 10 and it finds it at one place so it requires 4 that's what it was saying involve 4 probes 19 would involve 5 probes okay so you can try out so what is the problem here clustering problem as long as a table is big enough free cells you will always find but the time to find so will become larger okay uh, this is called the clustering problem we could see here also a lot of insertion so we were these this is the cluster that is formed if you hit something here you have to go all the way down okay so that is something the clustering problem so for that basically it tells that your lambda should be that's why it was less than 0.5 now linear probing it just sees what is the average number of probes for a successful search and an unsuccessful search for this hash table okay this has size 11 so if you need to find 20 so i will directly say that h of 20 is 20 modulo 11 which is 9 I find 20 here h of 30 will be 30 modulo 11 so 8 I find 30 here so it's just one hit directly 2 2 modulo 11 is 2 I find 2 here that's well done and then let's see we have 13 so 13 modulo 11 will be 2 but I don't find it here so linear probing I do I go further plus 1 so it will be 13 plus 1 14 modulo 2 modulo 11 it will become 3 and you will find it here so 25 will require now 25 modulo 11 will be 4 and it is found directly okay so lot of things are happening okay and it finds then that okay average number of probes that is required is 15 by 8 for all these different cases so it's nothing more than less than in fact 2 okay so you are requiring two search for each one of them in this example 
and similarly for unsuccessful search how much you want so if I'm searching let's say zero so those searches they are doing so how much search you have to do zero is of course you can see not there so h of zero will be zero mod of 11 so we will try to find it here and then what you will do you will try to find now h1 of zero it will become one modulo 11 but it finds that it's empty so it will stop because then now there is no use it means that there is no insertion if you find an empty cell in the linear probing you will stop so for example if i try to find two okay and in fact two is there so unsuccessful searches okay four if i try to find four four modulo 11 is four i will try to search here it's not found i will increment by one five modulo 11 i will come here i don't find it and then increment again empty cell found so, okay so you will not found and then he finds that okay unsuccessful search requires more comparisons because you have to find some empty cell okay that's the problem here so this is there so it searches unsuccessful search next thing is quadratic probing which will remove the problem of clustering but this shows that okay hash table in fact you can use the same memory and it removes the problem of extra memory and extra data structure that was introduced in open hashing or separate chaining. So I hope you understand this. Thanks a lot.